put any uh, idol in the temple, and he said he don't he didn't he didn't he don't think he they did. And if that is true, then we have to have a future temple at some point, um, because Jesus talked about a temple in regards of the. So if we haven't had this thing that Jesus is talking about fulfilled yet, well, it will be in the future. And probably, I would think, in the end times. But um, uh, I asked him, do you know if the Romans defiled the temple with an idol before it was destroyed in 70 AD? And he says, hmm, don't think so. It was after they destroyed it. And we just read that in regards of uh, the guy that renamed Jerusalem and all that. So, um, yeah. So let's see where they where did I go? Some of the faithful hid in their homes. That's the Christians. Other fled the marketplaces and moved to the desert. That is when these events occurred. So the Jews have no excuse left to them for their impudence. Are you Jews still disputing the question? Do you not see? That you are condemned by the testimony of what Christ and the prophet predicted and which the fact have proved. But why should this surprise me? That is the kind of people you are. From the beginning you have been shameless and obstinate, ready to fight at all times against the obvious facts. Well, uh, do you wish me to bring forward against you other prophets who clearly state the same fact, namely that your religion will come to an end? Again, uh, I don't think uh, well that ours would will flour flourish. Uh, ours will flourish and spread the message of Christ to every corner of the world. That a different kind of sacrifice will be introduced and will put an end to yours. At least listen to Malachi, who came, who came later than the other prophets. Let me not at this time bring in the testimony of Isaiah and Jeremiah or the other prophets who came before the captivity. So, yeah, before and before. Yeah, of course, Jeremiah, okay. Or the other prophets who came before the captivity. I do not want you Jews to say that their, that their predictions came true during the bondage. Let me bring forward a prophet who came after the return from Babylon and after the restor restoration of Jerusalem, a prophet who clearly predicted that what was to happen to you. The Jews did return from Babylon, they did recover their city, they did rebuild their temple, and they did offer sacrifices. But it was only after all this that Malachi predicted the coming of the present desolation and the abolition of, uh, abolition of the Jewish sacrifices. This is what he said, speaking in God's behalf. Shall I for your sake accept your persons, says the Lord Almighty? For from the rising of the sun even to its setting, my name is glorified among the nations, and everywhere they bring incense to my name and, and a pure offering, but you have profaned it. When do you think, when do you Jews think that this happened? When was incense offered to God in every place? When a poop when a pure offering question mark you could not mention a time other than the time after the coming of christ suppose malachi did not speak of our time suppose he did not speak of our sacrifice but of the jewish sacrifice then his prophecy will will be opposed to the law hmm. moses had forbidden the jews to bring their sacrifices to any other any place other than that which the lord god would choose and then he confined their sacrifices to one particular place. If Malachi said the sacrifices were going to be offered everywhere and that it would be pure, would be a pure offering, he was contradicting and opposing what Moses said. Uh, I have to read Malachi, but anyway, yeah. It's just, you know, there's a lot of conclusions here and arguments and all that. And, the, you know, that's, it's very hard to, to just, you know, uh, um, yeah, to, you know, do either way in regards of it. But there is no contradiction nor quarrel, for Moses spoke about one kind of sacrifice and Malachi later predicted another. What makes this clear? It is clear both from the prophet's words and also from many other 
indications. The first indication has to do with the place. For Malachi predicted that the sacrifice would be offered not in one city, as in the time of Jewish sacrifice, but from the rising of the sun even to its setting. The setting, the second indication has to do with the kind of sacrifice by calling it a pure offering. He showed the kind of sacrifice of which he spoke. A further indication deals with those who are going to offer this sacrifice. He did not say in Israel, but among the nations. He did not want you to think that the worship giving in this sacrifice would be confined to one, two, or three cities. Therefore, he did not simply say everywhere, but, but from the rising of the sun even to its setting. By these words, he showed that every corner of the earth seen by the sun will receive the message of the gospel. Again, I'm... I have no idea in regards of verifying it or, or anything. He called it a pure offering as opposed to the old he, he called it a pure offering as opposed to the old sacrifice which was impure and it was not by its own nature but because of the disposition and intention of those who offer it. This is why the Lord said your incense is loathsome to me. And yet in other respects, if you could, if you should put the two sacrifices side by side to compare them, you will find that the different, by the way, in regards to scripture, I don't remember God actually rebuking people for not, let's say, let's say they're in another city and they make a sacrifice to God in another city. I don't remember God actually rebuking people for that. But I remember that he be rebuking them for sacrificing to idols. That was the the, the, the the big thing, you know. You know, I don't remember anything where they... But maybe there are something in scriptures in regards of it that they were sacrificing another place and got burned or something like that. Uh, Hmm, nice no, writing here. Um, asking him, you know, he uh, says, Yes, before, no, you know, like I'm talking about the temple and all that, uh, that he, that this emperor put up a statue and all that. And he says, Yes, before, no clue. I don't think so. Story day there was heavy fighting in Jerusalem and they burned it doing fights. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's see here. Um, this is why the Lord said your insert. Okay, let's see here. And yet, in other respects, if you should put the sacrifices side by side to compare them, you will find that the difference between them is so great and unmeasurable that according to the nature of comparison, only this new sacrifice is probably called pure. Here we go again. It's a long time. He actually, it was some time he mentioned him. But again, if you count the times when he mentions Paul and the count the times where he, where he mentioned Christ, you will see that, you know, you have a huge amount of Pauls. Now, anyway, Paul contrasted the old law with the new law of grace and said that the old law had been glorified, but is now without glory because of the surpassing glory of the new law. And... Um, and of course, Paul had his own ideas and rules and so forth. So, um, and of like the Antichrist in Rome has his own ideas of what we should follow and what we shouldn't follow instead of just actually standing on the law. But anyway, of the law, I too would make so bold as to say in this case that if an if the new sacrifice should be compared to the old, only this new sacrifice would probably be called pure. For it is not offered by smoke and fat, nor by blood and the price of ransom, but by the grace of the Spirit. 
Now here another prophet who made the same prediction and said that the worship of God would not be confined to one place, but that the same, but that the time would come when all men would know him. It is Zephaniah who said, The Lord shall appear to all nations and will make all the gods of the nations waste away. Then each from its own place shall adore him. Yet this was forbidden to the Jews since Moses commanded them to worship in one place. Hmm. Well, well, maybe Jesus did say, you know, that the whole world will, you know, not only in Jeru you know, in regards to the Jerusalem and the other mounts and all that, and said, you know, the whole, you know, uh, the time is at hand that everybody will worship God, you know, in regards of all the world. So, you hear the prophets foretold and predicted that men will no longer be bound to come from all over the earth to offer sacrifice in one city or in one place, but that each one will sit in his own home and pay service and honor to God. What time other than the present could you mention as fulfilling these prophecies? At any rate, listen to how the Gospels and there we go, and the so-called Apostle Paul agree with Zephaniah. The prophet said, the Lord shall appear. Uh, Paul said, the grace of God our Savior has appeared to all men instructing us. Zephaniah said, to all nations. Paul said, to all men. Zephaniah said, he will make that God's Waste the way, Paul said, instructing us in order that rejecting ungodliness and worldly lust, we may live temperate and justly. By the way, there was something in regards of, oh, I think it slipped now. Um, what was it? Something interesting in, in regards to the book of Matthew that I read. Uh, but now it, now it flew out again. Um... Yeah, I guess I'll get it at some point again. I oh, here we have Jesus talking about the Son of Man shall come in his Father's, uh, what do you call it? Um, glory or something like that in English uh, with his angels and he will uh, what do you call it give uh, everybody after their uh, works <laughs> so anyway um, where did we go I can't remember what it was uh, getting tired is maybe also a good thing Again, Christ said to the Samaritan woman, "Woman, believe me." Oh, yeah. Here we have the thing that uh, that uh, that you know that Jesus says in regards of worship. Uh, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain, you know, this, she's talking about the Samaritan mountain, nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. God is spirit, and they who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. I I saw when Christ said this, He removed from us the future the obligation to observe one place of worship and introduce a more lofty and spiritual way of worship. These arguments would suffice to to establish that for the future there will be no sacrifice, no priesthood, no king among the Jews. Well, I don't know about that because it seems like there's still prophecies about, you know, things. And of course, are we not kings and priests with, you know, anyway. Above all, the destruction of the city has proved all these things, all these points, sorry. But I would also bring forward the prophets as my witnesses. And they distinctly uh, said the same thing, but I say, but I see that you have become very with the length of my discourse. Yeah, well, that's pretty long, 16 pages. I'm afraid that you may think I'm foolish and rash to keep annoying you. For this reason, I promise that I will speak to you on this subject another time. Meanwhile, I ask you to rescue your brothers, to set them free from their error, and to bring them back to the truth. Again, it's just... Um, 
the, uh, you know, you can just see Rome, you know, just getting more and more away from the Bible. There is no benefit in listening to me unless the example of your deeds will match my words. What I said was not for your sake, but for the sake of those who are sick, again, those who are sick, the other two, the eyes are so sick, you know, we are so sick because we want to keep the command, the, keep the festivals of Jehovah, which they also did in Asia Minor, you know, it's from the beginning, it's so, you know, uh, all very close to the beginning. I want them to learn these facts from you and, and to free themselves from their wicked association with the Jews. Yeah, oh, their wicked association with the Jews, you know, I just, I'm not, you know, you can speak about Jesus with the Jews, you know, they might not like it and all that, but you know, just, um, I want them then to show themselves sincere and genuine Christians. I want them to shun the evil gatherings of the Jews and their synagogues both in the city and the suburbs because these are rubber stands and dwelling of demons hmm. rubbers and dwelling of demons okay so then do not neglect the salvation of those brothers be meddlesome be busybodies but be meddlesome be busybodies but bring the sick ones to Christ be busy bodies. What is that? Busy bodies. That's something we shouldn't be, right? I think uh, something like that. But anyway, I don't think we should be that. But but bring the sick ones to Christ. Well, the Judaizers have found Christ. You know, <laughs> that's probably why they are Judaizers because they know the Master is a Jew and they kept the Jewish festivals. Well, he kept his, you know, Jesus festivals. Well, he kept his own festivals in some sense, you know, if Jesus gave the law, he is the, if he's the lawgiver and, you know, and he kept his own laws, you know, so, um, in this way we shall receive a greater reward for our good deeds, both in the present, uh, life and in the life to come. And we shall receive it by the grace and loving kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ the true whom and with whom be glory to the Father together with the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, now and forever, world without end. Amen. Oh, that's... It was a long, 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 long sermon, this one. And again, ah, just... I'd rather read the Bible again. Life is short. Again, I read it, you know, just... Oh, there's three more. This was just... Oh, three more of these. I probably should never have printed them out, you know, but you know, that might come some gold, you know, but it's like you use a lot of time to dig into it for sure to find something that it seems to be. Uh, I had hoped more of more information about these studios and instead of just, you know, And attacking the Jews and there, you know, maybe we should just look on ourselves in regards of issues instead of uh, let God take care of the Jews, you know. Um, Gone is the fasting of the Jews. That's homily eight. Yes, it is possible, lover. He's going to just continue. It's just the same, you know, regurgitation in some sense again and again and again oh the jews the jews are bad the jews are this the judaizers are dead blah 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 you know yeah you know uh what is it not really interesting and paul of course and paul and paul and paul doesn't really seem to you know just I have something in regards of committing adultery here. Hmm. That might be some interest. I hear it goes against the law, attacking the law of Jehovah. I would think a Christian would actually defend the law of Jehovah. You know, Jesus kept the law of Jehovah. And so did the Nazareans. But well, here we have the word Holocaust again. 
it goes to Paul in regards of had so many when Paul had so many testimonies in which God surely rejects those sacrifices, the times of the new moons, the Sabbaths, the festivals, why did he omit all these and mention just the one text? That one text? Many of the infidels and many of the Jews themselves who are now doing battle with me maintain that their common wealth and way of life has not a was not abolished because it was imperfect or its place taken by a greater way of life, I mean ours, but because of sinfulness of those who offered the sacrifices in those days. Yeah, well. Here we talk about Paul again, Paul again, Paul again, Paul again. Could we, what about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus? What about no, some Jesus and Paul again? Now, every, if you take... And fix, I think, if I take a, a, a pen and every time I see Paul and I fix it, you know, uh, and every time I see Jesus, I fix it. You know, that will be just huge amount of Paul. You know, you can just see one Paul here, two Paul here. Uh, where was it? Four, three, or three Paul, sorry, three. I got a little too uh, uh, eager. As, uh, four Paul here, uh, five Paul here. This is one page, six Paul. Seven, Paul, you know, Paul, 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 you know, Paul my this, Paul my that, where's Christ? After Paul said of Christ, after Paul said of Christ, oh yeah, we just used the, the fire, what do you call it, the, how to, uh, how to interpret it by Paul, of course, you know, we interpret Jesus through Paul, right, you know. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times just by looking quickly, you know, in regards of Paul coming out, you know, in the letters. <laughs> on one page, on one single page. So, and, and when he actually mentioned Christ, it's like Paul said of Christ, so that we have one Christ. Is there any other Christ on this page? <laughs> it's just insane. It's just utter insane. I uh, can't. Oh, oh, Paul. We have another Paul on the page. That's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times that he just talks about Paul. That just I quickly just pointed out. You know, just <laughs> just one page. Paul, 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 Paul said this, Paul said that, Paul said, you know. <laughs> well, it's just terrible. What about Jesus? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You, do we want to listen to Paul? Do we want to listen to Jesus? Yeah. Uh, for under it the people received the law. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah let's see. Next page. Oh, I already see a Paul on the next page. I do see a Christ as well. So we have a Paul here and a Christ. Uh, let's see here. What can we find quickly? Oh, here we have a Paul. That's number two. Yeah, uh, so there you see. Uh, it's like a, oh, there we now have another Paul. So there's three. <laughs> no Christ yet. Um, well, we have one Christ. Um, uh, he actually talks about our Lord. Here we have Christ. Okay. Uh, he's talking about something in, in regards to Melchizedek. Oh, Paul again, of course. So that was one, two, three, four Pauls, of course, on one page. Yeah. Um, do we have more Pauls? Paul, 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 where are you? Oh, there we have a Paul again. <laughs> it's so sad. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of Paul, as you can hear. Uh, he's just endlessly quoting Paul, you know, and it's just, oh, here we have a Paul again, oh, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to find, quickly scan the page for uh, Paul, yeah, that was one, two, three, four, five, six Pauls, just quickly, here we have the next page, can we find a Paul, can we find a Paul? Or maybe it's a page without Paul. Could it be a page without Paul? Mm, I don't see anything jumping out at me at the moment. No. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. <laughs> that was one, at least. Uh, no, no. And that's the end. So that's actually 
eight pages sermon we have left here and let's see the last one is 12 here we have a seven oh sorry we have tw that the last one is 12 pages number seven is nine pages and number six is ten pages that probably is just a lot of the same thing here we have in regards to final has wasn't that the guy that uh, put the thing into the person <laughs> now he's attacking them for keeping the Sabbath apparently um, yet even you, even today you abstain from blood, which would defile you, and you observe the Sabbath. You know all the Christians observe the Sabbath. You know it's just over time things just got downhill as usually. You know, but at the time you slew Christ, you violated the Sabbath. Well, he wasn't he wasn't slain on the Sabbath, but anyway, God even promised through Jeremiah to spare your city if you would stop carrying burdens on the Sabbath. Yeah, we are not to do. You know things on the Sabbath, you know. Uh, look, you're observing this law now. Well, yeah, it's one of the Ten Commandments. You don't think we should observe the Ten Commandments? Uh, you are not carrying burdens on the Sabbath, but God is not reconciled to you on this account. Since the sin of yours surpassed all sins, it is useless to say your sins are keeping you from recovering your homeland. You are in the grip of your present suffering, not because of the sins committed in the rest of your life, but because of that one reckless act. If this were not the case, God would not have turned his back on you in such a way, even if you had sinned 10,000 times. This is not clear only from all I have already said, but from what I am now going to tell you. And so, okay, so he, yeah, okay, I, I get it. You know, if the, if the Jews doesn't turn, of course, to Jesus Christ, you you know, he will not have his sins forgiven. But anyway. But there's more and doesn't really seem to be that much of interest in regards of me. Ah, here we have another Paul, of course, you know. Uh, yeah. And it goes, it's much of, it seems like, you know, you can, you know, it seems like he's using the same arguments as well going you know it's just you just get tired hearing him you know i would have you know fled from the church for for a long time you know why would i hear you know i'm sure i could find someone other or just read the scriptures that would be much more in regards to me now i'm going to take a break from this and i'm going to take a break i think from christian storm i i think i've gotten too much of him you know uh, so yeah huge amount of papers of yeah two one we have two number two plus but you know i've gotten through a lot of papers for sure you know a lot of pages uh uh that's for sure um uh oh let's see so two and two plus Three, four, and five. So it's it's it is a big amount of paper, like eleven pages, four pages. You see, that they, they, that wasn't really. Oh yeah, oh eight pages. Okay, so that would be twelve pages. It would. Okay, so we have on twenty-three pages, thirty-one pages. Uh, 40 pages, 56 pages, and that was the last 56 pages of his, of his, yeah. Anyway, I'll stop now. I'll, oh, see if I can get this. There we go. Again. It seems a little wasty to actually read these things. I had hoped that there would have been more interesting things, you know. It just seems to be... But, 
Yeah, yeah. I had hope he would talk more about the festivals as well. It seems like he goes on to, yeah, other things. But of course, you still get some practice in regards of. You can get some in regards to the festivals. You you get more understanding in regards of. Well, you know, you you get me. You know, the the more times you in regards to the festivals, the more of the better it stick in the mind and so forth. But of course, in regards to the Torah, that's the you know the Torah, the law is pretty much the one that you know have the instructions. So. Um, Instead of going, you know, sermons, like, just read the Bible, you know. Instead of all these, uh... Anyway, uh, have a good one. I'm, I'm going to stop this. Um, may Jehovah bless you and be with you. And let's, uh... uh hopefully there's other interesting things than this guy, you know. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to... Yeah, I'm thinking of not reading the rest, you know. But of course, now I've, I've come so long... Maybe I should just read them for myself and not, you know, who wants to hear them anyway, you know, God's of, uh, I'm not sure if I should even read them. It's just, you, you get tired of it. And it takes a long time to read it, you know, and there's, again, many other things to read. I still have, like, 30 pages left, you know, 30 pages of this guy. Just uh, torture reading it. You know, Paul, 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 Paul. If I wanted to just listen to Paul or read Paul, I could just go to his letters, but I'm not that interested in it. You know, I want to hear about Jesus, 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 Jesus. What did Jesus say? You know, I don't, I don't care what Paul said. What did Jesus say? You know? Ah. Yeah. Anyway, have a good one. Stopping now. That is me, over and out.